Thank you, Manu. Don Manu. Uh, you are in the most simple or not under that person. <laughs> Very good researchers, I think. Yeah, I'd like to make a uh, confession to the audience. Because of that oil, 
the stuff that was killing of oil, the major source of oil at that time, the mass use of wood and charcoal, and fuel train warehouses. So industries flourished and many made human lives easier at that time. So at that time, oil was the game changer, so to speak. But what happened? So that uh, we have this global warming. Uh, we know very well that 70 to 82 percent of the greenhouse gases uh, due to uh, global warming and the rest of what land is taking the methylation and the greenhouse oxide. But you see, our food system share is about uh, 56 percent. And it's no surprise because from land preparation, the chemicals that we use don't support the uh, uh, use of oil. But in sugar cane, uh, also sugar cane is machinery intensive, but uh, what contributes Contributes a lot of uh, 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 greenhouse gases is uh, burning. Uh, so, uh, who contributes the most? Well, of course, uh, the United States. So, that's why right now climate change is real. If science is still uncertain, then uh, uh, Dr. Lovitz has this uh, illustration. Trying to make your own interpretation. I give you some minutes. So I did not interpret that for you. So I do not know whatever. Forgive me, but as I said, the powerful display came from a lady, not from a man. So you cannot accuse us of. Uh, gender or whatever, yes? <laughs> Just to drive home the point, since this afternoon, this uh, lonely afternoon, I might as well crack a joke. So this is my joker for, for this afternoon. Why were you talking about this? Oil is a game changer. Crop production agriculture is virtually agricultural addiction. If there is a drug addiction that impairs human health and even leads to uh, uh, death, the long shadows of agricultural chemical addiction is the least appreciated. More than 95% of the world farmers believe that they cannot grow crops without agrochemicals, especially fertilizer. All over the world, less than 1% of agricultural land are in organic farming. Crop residues of birth to accelerate plant preparation. But you know, with the burning, this decreased soil organic matter. Uh, before what we are saying, agriculture, crop production is like mining the soil. Now we can replace that. Agriculture, crop production is destroying the soil or impoverishing the soil. So that if farmers now are claiming that they are poor, for me it's no surprise. It is more of a surprise if they are claiming they are rich because their soil are already so poor. <coughs> Uh, when it comes to, to the use of oil, I'm focusing your attention. Uh, there's one fertilizer which means crop yield, high crop yield, this nitrogen. But uh, one kilogram nitrogen uses 2.15 liter oil uh, and emits 12.91 kilogram CO2 equivalent. By the way, it took me uh, quite uh, some time to derive this. Uh, Figure because if you see in the literature, the variations in number is so big. So I might as well recompute uh, based from uh, more recent uh, data. And the formula is also uh, somewhat biggest. <coughs> so human activities emit greenhouse gases causing global warming uh, is now accepted. <laughs> That the food systems contribute something like 56 percent. Well, the Philippines only contributed 37 percent in 2000, but now, it, now it's about 0.3 percent. Okay. So small relative to the total. But you see, even with that, the Philippine president uh, committed us, uh, I'm referring to the outgoing president in a few days, uh, during the COVID 21 UN conference on climate change, 70 percent reduction. Uh, later on, why 
only 70%. Why 70%? <coughs> 195 nations signed for agreement with the COPE 81. This is the new agreement. Uh, the dream, what they have committed, is that we have to limit global warming below 2 degrees centigrade. Above 2 degrees centigrade, we do not know anymore what will happen. <coughs> International community's remaining budget for mission is less than 1,000 gigatons or 1 terabyte. The challenge is so enormous. Why? If we burn all the remaining petroleum, equivalent global emission will be around 15,000 gigatons, 15 terabyte. So we need to say we are in excess of 14 terabyte. So a budget na lang ho natin ay 1 terabyte. And as I've said, a problem that we have this addiction. Sugar cane production is no exception. Uh, it's an intensive energy required process. I've uh, been doing this analysis since uh, 2002. Uh, from uh, cane growing the field, uh, and land preparations also for growing, volumes the field, manufacturing, transport of biochemicals, the fertilizer that we use uh, directly and indirectly used. <coughs> so, upon whom not thinking, and how do we look at sugar cane production setting? Sugar cane production, therefore, should be only using low energy so that it can emit only uh, a small amount of carbon, electrically carbon footprint. <coughs> uh, and, of course, uh, to decrease the cost of production, sustain its economic viability and long-term logical stability. So this is what we call the three E's of uh, production. <coughs> Quantifying the carbon footprint of the product uh, can be used as the basis for reducing its uh, greenhouse gas emission. Uh, on this basis, uh, President Aquino, two years ago, 24th of November 2014, he issued Executive Order 174, institutionalizing the Philippine Greenhouse Gas Inventory Management and Reporting System. Uh, I do not know if you already know this, but they said, they say, or they claim, ignorance of the law excuses no one. Now that you know it, so you have no excuse that you do not know it. But even if you do not know it, we have not excuse because it is a law already. Unless another executive order will repeal it. But I don't think no president will repeal this executive order. And I think no president of the Philippines will also reduce the commitment of 70% of President Pinoy. Perhaps if there, if there are landmark activities or whatever, important uh, decisions that President Aquino made, it was issuing this executive order and committing our country to 70% the reduction of uh, carbon footprint. So, tayo po sa akating, ano kaya responsibility natin because education, dun sa pagsisimula. So, the objectives uh, of this study, of this paper, finally, how we could recommend, how can we adopt uh, production practices, how do we pursue research and development, and what are the policy options uh, that we can uh, uh, formulate and implement to reduce the high energy and carbon footprint for this crop, for sure thing. And hopefully we can do it for, for corn, for rice, or many other crops, or for all crops. Because uh, as I've claimed, as the, the grain economists, grain international economists claim, <coughs> majority of the greenhouse gas emissions come from our food, which is uh, about 56 percent. Uh, by the way, I prepared here a merienda for you. Uh, a low carbon footprint merienda. <laughs> I'll explain later why I came. So the approach, uh, well, let's use one uh, review or read the study because analyze results so so. Uh, briefly, uh, this the study about uh, your opponents. Uh, I tried to 
they classify the energy consuming uh, components, uh, or carbon emitting operation or inputs, uh, into five. Uh, one is for the crop establishment, two, care and management of the crop, the farming inputs, the fertilizer, the herbicides, harvesting and hauling beans to the sugar mill, and then uh, uh, what we call, or what I call, the better energy. <coughs> Calculating the energy bill and carbon footprint of sugarcane production. A while ago, I made the confession so difficult. How, how to formulate appropriate formulas for calculating the energy bill and carbon footprint of sugarcane production? Uh, I will not be showing all those formulas, but the one is the summary. You know. So, the energy, energy bill of uh, sugarcane production was calculated using the Below, uh, you know, I am fan of arithmetic. There is no dy/dx derivatives or integration or differentiation equations here. They're simply arithmetic, okay? Addition. So if you are good in, in arithmetic, you can tackle this uh, subject. But of course, uh, those uh, um, the challenge here is how to use. Uh, uh, that's really accurate, near precise, near accurate technical definition. <clears throat> Again, uh, uh, for the part inputs, uh, I mentioned a while ago uh, about nitrogen fertilizer. It's so difficult to calculate the nitrogen emission of uh, nitrogen fertilizer because it has a direct emission and indirect uh, emission, so to make the total emission. And the indirect emission is also attributed to volatilize as well as the its end. So those major soil science can understand this. Okay. <clears throat> so finally, in this equation, I was able to uh, uh, come up with this value which I used a while ago. Uh, the carbon emission uh, from nitrogen, one kilogram nitrogen fertilizer, it's about 13 kilogram CO2 equivalent per kilogram nitrogen. But of course, uh, uh, our uh, uh, colleague here, farmers, will say, hey, we will not apply nitrogen then. We will not get high yield. Uh, uh, our, one, of my dis one of our discussions here is our, also our alumnus from the university, one of the outstanding sugar cane planter in the Philippines, uh, I use his farm as one of the best farms. He's using 300 kilograms <laughs> nitrogen per hectare. <laughs> so you can multiply 300 times 13. That's the <laughs> emission <laughs> he's contributing in the atmosphere. <laughs> so the net carbon dioxide emission equivalent. Another practice is, uh, of course, uh, uh, burning. Yeah, I would like to explain a bit about burning. Uh, later on, I'll show you the diagram. Uh, here, I did not include the carbon, direct carbon emission from carbon dioxide. Reason, the argument is that in the next uh, cycle of photosynthesis, anyway, CO2 will be reabsorbed to carbon fixation to the process of photosynthesis. So, what remains are the emission of methane, carbon monoxide, and nitrous oxide. Uh, I uh, included an equation on calculating avoided emission of carbon uh, dioxide. What is an avoided emission? Uh, if, if, you, if you burn or not burn, okay, then uh, there's no emission of uh, carbon dioxide. Instead, uh, that Organic matter will decompose and becomes uh, stable humus. Okay. Uh, and then we have the so called avoided emission of methane, carbon monoxide, and nitrous oxide. And uh, avoided emission due, due to nitrogen fixation. Why? Because for every uh, kilogram of trust, the uh, associated or the so called nitrogen fixation is about 10 kilograms. Uh, that's the average. It can be as high as uh, 15 kilograms. Uh, uh, per ton, so it is for 5 to 15 kilograms. So I just use the, I use the midpoint, which is 10 kilograms. Okay. <coughs> uh, 
Why is an avoided division? Because of that, ultimately, then we can reduce the nitrogen fertilizer application. Uh, in, in Brazil, they are only applying as high as uh, uh, 90 kilograms per hectare to as low as 50 kilograms per hectare now because of uh, non trash burning or uh, trash burning. Okay. And then, of course, when we burn, we directly emit a lot of nutrients. So if you don't burn, then you retain them. Uh, nitrogen is about 90% burned, uh, phosphorus 20 to 25, uh, potassium 70 to 75. Uh, percent. Uh, with trash farming, then we extend more the ratoons. Instead of one or two ratoons, uh, maybe about five or six times. So there is also avoided uh, emission due to the burned fuel during land preparation. So, uh, in book, I uh, emphasize this. Uh, so, uh, and then, <coughs> to put value on carbon, there's now what they call social costs of carbon. Okay. So I included here the, the formula. So what what uh, what are the results we think? Uh, yeah. So machines that are used in land preparation limits uh, or use 250 LBOP. LDOE means liter diesel oil equivalent. Uh, where is uh, Mr. Corpus? P.P. Corpus. He is the one who proposed this, this uh, word, liter diesel oil equivalent, in their paper that they presented way back in 1994 in the convention. Uh, the convention is used the word gigajoule or joules. But an ordinary man cannot visualize what is gigajoule. Uh, so from gigajoule to liter diesel oil equivalent, you just divide it with 0 0.0384, then it is converted immediately to liter diesel oil equivalent. Uh, we know what is li one liter of oil, <laughs> diesel oil. <laughs> so uh, with that of the uh, uh, planting, the labor, uh, <coughs> In the paper, I was mentioning about direct oil and indirect oil, okay? Uh, labor is also given uh, 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 energy value, okay? Why? And it is classified as indirect oil. Why? Because when, when we work, we actually use energy. Where do we get that, that energy? From the food that we eat. <laughs> so every day, uh, each labor would consume uh, roughly uh, 0.4 uh, liter diesel oil equivalent when you are working. So I was mentioning a while ago that direct and indirect energy use in sugar cane production. That uh, direct energy use is about uh, 366 and uh, indirect uh, use is about 605 or roughly 40-60. Why indirect energy is higher? It's because of the fertilizer, okay? So, fertilizer is lumped into indirect energy because you don't put, uh, you don't directly consume. <laughs> yes. But you use a lot of energy in uh, manufacturing nitrogen fertilizer, first place. Uh, as I said a while ago, it's 2.15 liter diesel oil equivalent once it reaches the farm. In the manufacture, it would range from 1.4 to 1.8 liter diesel oil equivalent. But it, it undergoes so much uh, hauling, storage, hauling, so and so forth. And we are far in the Philippines. Yes, hauling. So you see the truck. And hauling, what will I do? Data. Oh, oh. And only is more than 200 uh, liter diesel oil equivalent. That is harvesting it only. By the way, this is study uh, which I did not include uh, processing. Uh, that's the, the subject matter of the paper uh, of uh, uh, Dr. Rex Demakilis and the group together with Dr. Uh, here, which was presented in the last uh, 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 case of the convention. Was only last year. 
yeah, let me summarize the, the long list of energy uh, uh, version of time. Yes. Of course, I should I want to mention that uh, we spend a lot of energy in planting compared with the uh, Dragon A. Why? Because we don't have already the crop, crop establishment uh, energy bill, it's about 240 the 20% uh, energy bill in the plant game. In the Ratung game, since we don't have land preparation, uh, what was included as crop establishment uh, for the Ratung game are only the stubble shaving and crush burning. Uh, the Monday is involved. Okay. So, many uh, lang uh, So, we apply more fertilizer in the plant game. Why? Because we ex the planters uh, expect higher yield in the plant game. So they apply more fertilizer than in the Ratung game. Okay? Uh, and, and finally, uh, now, why the embedded energy is also lower uh, in, the, in the plant game, uh, in the Ratung game than in the plant game? The computations of embedded energy is translated into per ton K. Okay? How much energy or how much time you use the machines on so forth translated on a per time basis. And I'm using uh, uh, a coefficient of 0 0.0384 uh, per, uh, per ton gain in terms of embedded energy. With the long so, obviously, what we want to say, ratoning is an energy saving uh, practice because uh, it's almost 40%. Okay? And uh, later on, you find out that uh, the lower energy is used uh, in, in the moderator. Is it also correct to say that we use lesser energy uh, in the in the Later on, you see the okay. okay, this is the summary of the five major sources of energy, energy building in uh, sugar cane. Uh, production, okay, crop establishment, 120 seconds. That's the average of uh, one planting and one raccoon. Farm inputs 484, which is 51 percent. Harvesting and hauling about 240 uh, liters of oil. That's 25 percent. Okay. So when we average one plant and one raccoon, that's about 941. Okay. So when we express it on a per ton basis. Uh, of course, uh, it will be the farm inputs, fertilizer, herbicides will, will be getting, uh, spending a lot of cash. So the challenge, how do we reduce the energy bill of sugarcane production? So we have the three major sources, crop establishment, fertilizer, oil, and harvesting. <coughs> so this is the summary of the reduction in energy bill as we raccoon our games from 2 to 6. So, about 79% if we raccoon up to 6, uh, 76 or 55 uh, liter diesel oil equivalent per hectare if we raccoon 5 times. <coughs> Savings uh, in energy, I also put the greenhouse gas emission reduction with the best value of safe energy. If, uh, if planters, 50, 60, percent of them will uh, adopt the practice of extended tattooing, okay? Even if only 50% uh, of them will be adopting, then we are already saving something like uh, 0.79 million liters of oil, okay? Uh, 136 uh, million tons of uh, of uh, uh, greenhouse gas emission. Okay? Our base energy is our uh, benchmark energy farm. Now, a while ago, I was mentioning, uh, is it justified to ask our planters to extend their tools? Now, uh, in this analysis, you will find out that uh, as they will, as they extend the ratung for a think, ratung 6, if the yield will decrease, 
to 160 tan K per hectare. The energy used per tan K is already 14, 15. So this is what I have, uh, uh, the reason why I told you the last time. So, another decision. If you want to decrease our yield, then you go to more atoms. But of course, later on, that's the challenge. How do we pursue ratuni without significant decline in yield? Because if we just simply do ratuni without anticipating, without uh, uh, finding out how do we maintain the yield in the ratun, then we will be uh, at a loss. So at 35,500 cost of plant care establishment, I removed the fertilizer expense. This translates to about 12 tons a day, at the current price of sugar, uh, including glasses. So that means if we decrease raton yield by 20, 25, 30 tons per hectare, means a forgot income of about 23, 37, 81,000 pesos per hectare, respectively. It's unfair for the farmers. It's also unfair for the nation because we will be importing a lot of sugar. What about fertilizer? Okay. Fertilizer is more than 50% of the total energy. Okay. So, uh, the energy use for fertilizer uh, and the planting is 11.73.12 uh, 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 liter diesel oil equivalent from sugar. In the return, it's much slower. Okay? If the yield, what's the yield that uh, I uh, use here? I think the yield that I use is still uh, the benchmark yield of about 86 tons scale per hectare. By the way, I use a relatively high uh, base yield. Uh, for plant cane, it's about 100, and for the return, it's about 80. So the average would be something like 86 tons in per hectare. Why? Why did I use a high benchmark yield? If you are to reduce, if you are, if I were to use the current uh, national yield level, we have nothing to reduce anymore because the yield is low. The yield is uh, 60, 60, 65 tons in per hectare. Okay. Why the yield is low is because. The fertilizer application rate is also low. <laughs> Land preparation also is low. <laughs> so we have nothing to reduce. So we'll be importing a lot of sugar, which is not good for the economy, which is not good for employment. Remember, the Philippine sugar industry is employing about 700,000 direct employment and additional 500, 5 million in direct employment. <laughs> so, Industry figure says, claims that for every five tons sugar produced, you employ one person. So, if we import time 100, 100 tons, 100,000 tons, that means we are disengaging you know, 2,000 people. <coughs> uh, reduce energy bill and less of value of fertilizer, if we, if we save 50% of our farms will be reducing uh, their fertilizer by 30%, 30% reduction, these are the values. Uh, but in the 50% of farms will be uh, using this in year 3, and year 4 they will be increasing, so uh, that's it. Okay. The current energy value of uh, fertilizer application is about 5 billion or close to 6 billion uh, pesos at the current price of oil which is 27 liter. So, FAO claim 50 to 60 percent increase in yield is attributed to fertilizer. Okay. Meaning to say, if we reduce considerably our fertilizer application, then there will be reduced yield. Okay. We save a lot of pesos. But we don't have sugar. <laughs> Very efficient in sugar. 
So uh, uh, now we're using that. As I know, time for every time a pin, it requires 1.5 or well, the best 1.5. It should be 0 0.72 kilogram. 1.5 to 2 kilogram. Uh, 0.75 to 1 kilogram of phosphorus. 1.5 to 2 kilogram of potas. Nitrogen is most critically needed in large amount, but it is also the nutrient element that gives the highest amount of energy and the highest carbon dioxide emission equivalent. So I computed it. it's about 12.91 kilogram of CO2 equivalent per per year. <coughs> Fertilizer accounted for the high percentage of the energy bill. Why? Because 95 percent is nitrogen, and the heavier boss uh, process. And our factor consumes a lot of energy which requires high pressure and high temperature. And nitrogen is applied the most, 62% by weight in northern and cross occidental. And in the benchmark part in the campus, it's 100%. Okay. There are farming techniques for reducing fertilizer already. They are being done already by our farmers, but of course, not many of them. I don't know if practice in that case, what is it? It is not to burn the case to uh, what we call practice of uh, trash farming. They are pulling and flying mattress and we ask in their farms. Of course, they adopt good agronomic practices, use of location, adopted high yielding of sugar right? practicing peace selection, time cultivation, good drainage, proper application of the limited amount of fertilizer, high price fertilizer. So, to go, um, example, no? So, we like to use for me. So, they're using trash shredder. One of the reasons why, why farmers burn the pain, because hindi po kasi na kasi shred na ganito, hindi mag-germinate yung mga tears. This is what we call Rakumi. So, if after, uh, uh, trash shredding, then they can wear some shredding. Uh, of course, the other major reason is that with this uh, unshredded trash, it's so easy to burn. So, it's so easy to burn. So, it's so easy to burn. So, it's so easy But with the shredded trash, then uh, uh, after a month or two, they can pass already uh, into our cultivator and uh, the trash will be mixed in the soil. So they will start decomposing that bird. That's what I created. It's already popular nitrogen fixation. In Negros, what they are doing is to place uh, the, the trust uh, in the in the rows. There every other. <coughs> what about polling? So as I was mentioning, polling is one of the major uh, uh, contributory to energy consumption. It's about 240 liters of oil equivalent per hectare. These are the big and more efficient trucks being used. I think the, I, I took the picture in uh, Central as a de Don Pietro. As early as 1950s, cane polling costs have been recognized by industry leaders in their paper presented the transporting canes to the field contribute as much as 25 to 35 percent of the total production. But uh, right now, uh, what is uh, uh, happening is that canes are being transported to, from up to 80 to 180 kilometers. So, from as far as Sagay or Cadiz or uh, or from as far as these places that transport sa, sa uh, Victoria. Uh, I interviewed both the planters and industry leaders that were claiming about 30% of cakes are pulled in this cross for regular uh, pattern. The cakes in North Sagay are pulled to the south, as much as 130 kilometers. Over and above the distance from the farm to the transloading station where things from smaller trucks are loaded or unloaded again. So, in addition to the 1.15 liter per ton during hauling to the transloading station, an additional of 3.135 uh, liter per ton is used for transporting uh, things. 
So, a total of 4.285 uh, liters per ton just for cooling uh, purposes. So, what are the options if you're using cooling? Uh, one is the use of bigger and more fuel-efficient trucks. Uh, pero, comment po ka agad din na eh, we need well-paid roads. Okay. To use those big trucks, long trucks, eh, kung bako-bako yun. <laughs> so, yun po sa <laughs> adjustment, adaptation to bad roads are the smaller trucks. Tama ba yan, Luis? How can you use the big truck? Uh, and then, what happened to the industry? In the 60s, there is what we call mill district or zoning that you cannot build the things beyond 15 kilometers away. So that is the area. But in the 60s, uh, it was declared free for all. There is no more zoning. No? That's why the Corona transloading scheme because of that. But uh, when I asked uh, some industry leader about transloading, sabi nila, that impossible pati din mo transloading. So it's now impossible to start down with transloading. Uh, uh, why are they uh, why are they getting gains from borrowing places? One, their their sugar mills are big. There are four sugar mills in Texas, which are super big. So they really need to score gains uh, uh, outside. There's one big mill in Negros, of course I should not mention the name, where 60% of their gains are obtained as far as Pasi in Luilo. Sinasakay sa barko, sa bars. Uh, uh, well, in the paper, I was explaining why they are doing that. Will they still earn money if they will be transporting their thing? And by the way, in the super industry, they have what we call uh, uh, tracking allowance or subsidy. They are paying as much as 500 pesos per ton already just to get the things. Uh, I try to pencil push that. Will they still be early? One of the major requirements of this big mill is bagas. To fuel uh, their raw sugar factory, their distillery, and their, uh, of course, uh, their refinery, refinery, and this time, their cogen. Because there is electric power cogeneration. So I think they're still earning money. Because if they will not be earning money, then they will stop. Nobody will give them subsidy anyway. So with that four factories, they can distribute the cost then. Because if they will not have any bagas, they have nothing to burn. It's so expensive to buy, to burn back their oil. Also. <laughs> yeah. Because there's already a competition. Now, the cheapest will be through railways. Because the the energy bill is only 0.25 uh, liter diesel oil per ton gain. 90% of gains in Australia uh, are owed to the mill through the railways. Before, in Asiata New Zealand, there are still railways. And I was told, even in Negros, there are existing railways. Bakit ko na wala? Oh, so many stories to tell. And then there is also this uh, phenomenon now. Because of this uh, four factory setup of bigger mills, they extend their operation uh, only allowing uh, one month stop for maintenance and repair. But we claim in agronomy, it is not agronomically optimal. Uh, in the other paper I wrote, that this is uh, uh, agronomically theoretical. Because July, August, or early September are still rainy days in a non ending year. Okay? Uh, this is the period of time when we, there is a rapid growth. Okay? When uh, growth accumulation would be as high as 20, 30 to 40 tons a game per month. So, if they will be harvesting in July, then they will be missing that. 
So they will only be reducing the, the farmers to a very low yield of 40 or 50 ton scale per hectare. Uh, considering 50% of orchids are produced in agros, there must be a way to offset the yield depressing effect of harvesting earlier than normal. This is about 20 to 24% of 330 millimeters or about 39 to 40% of the 180 days normal or regular millimeters. By the way, in Australia, they build their canes 150 to 160 days only. I compute that more or less a 5 tons scale per hectare from an average of 65 tons scale per hectare of yield. Uh, this translates to about 1.125 million tons a day. So what we are saying now, with this practice, there will be more yield decline. Uh, you have mentioned that there is a time to sleep, there is a time to work, time to, work, time to rest. Same is true with sugar tea. Mamaya po, kahit lalabas, mamimirenda, pumitayo, so on so forth, then we sleep. And the following morning, <laughs> rise up again and work. Same is true with, with the crop. Uh, nighttime is for sleeping. Daytime is for working. <laughs> so something like that. That's the genetic crop. So what I'm saying, there must be a, on the other end, this is a challenge. Can we really do uh, research work, uh, adjust the varietal tree, and do accompanying agronomic practices to offset the depressing effects of early harvest? Okay. Or the other option, we should be able to increase further the yield of canes harvested during the regular optimal crop establishment months, for example, the March or February, through irrigation, optimum fertilizer application, and good agronomic practices. Of course, we have this so-called project 200, we want to increase the yield of chain to 200. Okay. Uh, we have not crossed that yield barrier, but we are obtaining 151 things, beans, and 151 uh, uh, birds and dogs here as we've 191? Before, uh, another farmer, including the Blanca, had obtained about 187 tons came per hectare in his two and a half hectare farm. Take note, the national average yield is only 60, 65 tons came per hectare, I mean, three times uh, higher than the national average. <coughs> so it's possible to increase yield. Summing up the options to reduce the energy bill, okay, if we, if we combine uh, all the good practices, what will happen? Uh, if 70% will be pursuing uh, five platoons, what will be the overall yield uh, energy reduction will be something like 41% relative to the benchmark, which is, which is 10.97. <coughs> now our energy bill per ton is only 6.48. Benchmark is 10.97. Oh, I oh, ah, you see it all. The ideal or the best option uh, is when we use uh, the 70% reduction of fertilizer and we lower our cane by rail, which use only what, 0.25 uh, LDOV per ton cane. So, uh, why are you using your panel of the Anyway, uh, if we add 149, 1.59, it will be less than, it will be less than 6.48. I think it's only about 5 uh, liter diesel equivalent per, per country. Carbon footprint. So, uh, when we say carbon footprint, uh, it does not refer really to our footprint, no? but it refers to the total amount of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas uh, emitted, which will include methane, carbon monoxide, and two salt <coughs> So, I use the same uh, illustration of my own. Okay. So, this time, the 
value. Uh, crop establishment, 505 estimation. Uh, okay, care management, 315. Cane barley, 13. Non CO2 equivalent, the highest. Uh, 35. Okay, the very smart data for carbon footprint of sugar production. On a per hectare is about 7.5 tons. On a per ton, the increase is 5 kilograms CO2 equivalent. Per kilogram raw sugar, 0.86 kilogram carbon dioxide equivalent. What's our per capita consumption? It's about 20, 21 kilograms. So 20 kilograms times 0.8, that's about 16 kilogram CO2 equivalent. Kaya po, pag kayo'y nagkakapit sa umag or end time of the day, you just imagine, parang bumubukha rin yung carbon dioxide. <laughs> you're also emitting carbon dioxide uh, in that coffee that you're drinking. The major sources, the major sources, just the same, the crop establishment, 7.2%, care management, but you see, the farm inputs 27.35%. Uh, I separate the, the nitrous oxide carbon dioxide equivalent of uh, nitrogen. It's because uh, you cannot, I cannot plug into the farm inputs because it's uh, different than compute the nitrous oxide emission. If we add that, then the farm inputs is about 41%. Harvesting and holding. Uh, about 13, uh, 0.5%. So, how do we reduce? If we reduce the energy bill, we will also reduce the more less carbon emission. Okay. Uh, let's see. Our goal is to reduce our emission by 7%. That is the commitment of our president. And as, as I mentioned a while ago, no president of this country, including Duterte now, although he said change is coming, he will not change that figure. <laughs> will President Duterte include the changing that uh, commitment we that you know, he made in the copy 21? <laughs> Perhaps he will not give me your answer about this. So, if if our our farmers will adopt five platoons and uh, what, uh, uh, use uh, zero nitrogen fertilizer, haul their things by rail, then we can reduce our emission by 78%. Okay? But as I have said, Sino naman na magsasakang magtatarim na tao? Oh, it will be the sugar cane planter will not be applying nitrogen fertilizer anyway. <laughs> That's impossible. That is impossible. <laughs> we will not be able to convince them. Perhaps, uh, ultimately, we can convince them, okay, if they have already rebuilt their soil, up to 90 kilograms fertilizer. But take note, it's only 61.58. But take note also, uh, holding of things is through the use of rain. Okay? So if we are using uh, uh, just the usual, those big trucks, then uh, the, the, the emission reduction would range from 21, 34, at best, uh, will be 46% uh, percent reduction. That is, they are only applying 90 kilograms of fertilizer. So that's a bit impossible. <laughs> Reducing the carbon footprint of sugarcane production based from the benchmark footprint of 52.7 kilograms per ton case. So, what's our option? Increasing the ratio cycle from 3 to 5 to 5 ratoons. But how can we do that? We don't have the ratooning variety. Those don't have the ratooning variety. We decrease the fertilizer 30 50 to 70 percent. That's only 90 kilograms per hectare. <coughs> that will lead to 41, 34, or this is 70 percent kilograms CO2 per uh, month. 
equivalent to this uh, reduction of the The idea or the best option is fiber of cycles, minimal fertilizer, fertilizer, and cooling by rain as follows. By rain, 95 kilograms and 20 kilogram uh, carbon dioxide equivalent or 61-15 percent reduction. 50 kilogram nitrogen only, 16 kilograms of equivalent per tonne, 69 percent, plus the iron up 0.9 percent. But through organic farming, those no nitrogen, then 11.25 kilograms of equivalent per tonne, 17 or 79 percent, almost 79 percent reduction. <coughs> Two million liters fertilizer and pollen gains to the mill, pollen gain, pollen gains by rain, rains to be the most promising option for the future for us. It costs at least 10% of 2.59 meters per tonne. Trash farming or no burning gains is the main agricultural practice that will significantly cut down the energy bill in the total carbon dioxide emission of fuel in production. How do you explain that? So in the book, uh, in trash farming, we don't have any direct or indirect emission of this greenhouse gases. Okay? We conserve the nutrients, we improve the soil quality, so we increase uh, the, the soil organic matter, so we lessen the need for deep fillings to establish the plant pain, so we minimize raccoon yield uh, decline. Uh, so, in other words, we can increase the raccoon cycle. So we control the weeds and so forth. Uh, one thing that is not being appreciated from the Philippines, nobody or I've yet to hear someone who will study the effects of burning on human health. But, and for um, um, hazardous, I mean, pap. This is what they call polycyclic uh, aromatic hydrocarbon. So, sa pinin pa lang medyo ha, ganatang twisting. So, siguro masama sa pala nito. <laughs> and many dirts or, or dust. Many dirts or dust. So, uh, uh, it's hard to put costs on the industrial <laughs> So the next source of energy, environment, and economics of production will be to what? Not to apply or just minimal application of fertilizer, decreasing the energy bill, decreasing the carbon dioxide emission or the environment that will be good, better and larger, especially. Uh, in sugar uh, uh, producing areas, decreasing the cost, cash cost of production, meaning to say, improve profitability. <coughs> the carbon footprint per tank gain, as you can see, what are these APC? These are the scenarios. Uh, uh, what is A scenario? Uh, the, the common practice, so on so forth. Uh, what's the impact? Uh, 60 uh, or 61 percent uh, reduction and up to 70 uh, percent reduction in carbon emission. <coughs> but what? Without burning. So on kung mangyayari? When we burn, yes, the carbon emission will only be carbon, or this will be carbon monoxide, or carbon dioxide. Or there's carbon dioxide, it's correct. But this is used again in crop photosynthesis. So, if you put it crop biomass, you can put it in the sugar cane. But without burning, there is net CO2 fixation. Kasi ba siya kukuha ng carbon dioxide? Okay? So, that will be in the biomass, that's about 11.13 tons per hectare in the trash. So, that is in the organic matter, it will also decompose. Yes, if it is decomposed, then it can emit it back. But, 15% of the organic matter will become humus carbon. So, it becomes unstable, uh, carbon it is already the soil organic matter. So that's 1.62 tons carbon per hectare translated into carbon dioxide 
to have the length. By the way, from carbon to carbon dioxide, we just multiply by 3.7. Okay. 3.7 times 1.64, that's about 6 tons carbon dioxide equivalent per hectare. So what we are claiming is that we can have unavoided carbon dioxide definition of something like 12 tons carbon per hectare without burning. So, to summarize, without burning, we can reduce the energy bill by 312 liter diesel oil equivalent per hectare, avoided emission of about uh, 12 uh, carbon, uh, uh, 12 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. Okay? Hey, by the way, we have the carbon sequestered in the bar thrust group stumps, which is about 2 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. So if we add that to the 1195, uh, that's 13 tons carbon uh, dioxide equivalent. And if we convert that to the social costs of carbon, of otherwise safe nutrients and uh, emitted uh, carbon uh, dioxide equivalent, it has a value of 19 or almost 30,000 pesos. <laughs> Take note, the social cost of carbon that I used, uh, because this is the one that is being used by the technical uh, working group of the United States. It is $21 uh, dollar per ton. It was reassessed. It is, they are claiming now that the social cost of carbon is about $950 dollar per ton. And it will increase to $1,500 per ton by 2050. <coughs> so, uh, while I was mentioning about these 13 tons, so that no burning, trash farming leads to 13 tons carbon dioxide emission equivalent or avoided emission. And, so I was mentioning a while ago that the social cost of carbon will be something like uh, uh, what? Uh, we multiply. Uh, a while ago I was mentioning uh, 31 uh, dollar per ton, but someone is saying, hey, that is slow. It should be what? It should be uh, now about what? 40 dollar uh, per uh, ton carbon. So, uh, the social costs of carbon is about 36 pesos and 25 uh, centavos per kilogram. <coughs> we cannot avoid emitting carbon dioxide. So, what is the carbon balance? The human sequestered is about 6, avoided emission 1.9, the total of what? Uh, 11.96 okay. on a per ton basis that is 130 but <coughs> first if you are applying 90 kilogram fertilizer that is uh, 14 uh, kilogram per uh, ton okay. so there is a net CO2 emission uh, uh, avoidance emission of 124 well we have a benchmark of CO2 which is 85 so, we have a carbon balance of 52 uh, kilogram per uh, tank. On a per hectare basis, that translates to 4.5 or 4,556 uh, kilogram uh, CO2 equivalent. So, what does this mean? It means that the sugar cane can be a net carbon sequestrating rather than carbon emitting if we don't really stop burning our things. <clears throat> if we stop burning things uh, 10 years from now, then we'll just be applying 80 kilograms or 100 kilograms or even 50 kilograms uh, per ton. Uh, others say, hey, we we'll just apply mud press with us so we can put, uh, return back. The, the organic matter, the nutrients, and so forth. Yes, that's okay. That's a good uh, 
initiative also. But remember, milk ash and mud crest is only about 4 to 5 percent of tannins. Okay? So, if you balance the materials, it's still very small. What about the truss? The, tr the truss is 12 to 15 percent of tannins. So, still, even if you will be getting all the mud press and mill us, there will still be a difference of what? Uh, 12 divided minus 4, that's about 8. So, we are still deficit of 8 percent. That's why, over the years, for the last 50 to 100 years that we are burning our sugar cane trash, that's why the soil organic matter had been dealt. Okay. Uh, what's the consequence? They have to apply large amount of fertilizer, large amount of nitrogen fertilizer. Uh, I cannot play my comparators. The benchmark is 300. <laughs> <coughs> so that's the explanation. Now, the only way to increase yield is to increase fertilizer application. Of course, with the other adoption of good agronomic practices, using the best variety, using good cultivation, kind of planting, so on so forth. Okay? Uh, <coughs> Will this not offset? The carbon sequestering effects of no burning or grass farming. Would there not be an incremental emission uh, because of the added nitrogen? Uh, but the, the thing is, if we increase the yield, then there will be an increase of trash okay, from 11 to 20 tons per hectare, or a difference of 9 tons per hectare. So we have a carbon dioxide balance of 3.7 tons per hectare. The benchmark is 4.5 tons carbon per hectare. So, okay lang. For as long as you do not burn the trash, then we have a positive carbon balance. Uh, I do not claim precision of my estimate because calculations in this kind of uh, activity, your accuracy depends on the technical coefficients that you are using. Okay? Of course, I'm using uh, the, the best available technical coefficient, the standard ones, as, uh, uh, used by IPCC, International Panel of Climate, climate Change. So, if, if they will question my, the validity of my estimate, they will question IPCC. So what is now the policy in imperative? We should have an agro-environment protocol for the Philippine sugar industry. That from here on, we have to complain for no burning. So that ultimately we can increase the revenue. That in cycle, we also need to and refine and use as trash farming. No burning, trash farming, transform the energy intensity, carbon emitting, hydrogen fertilizer, starch sugar cane, and into carbon sequestering avoiding system. But how do we stop, or how do we convince planters to stop burning their clean up their house? Okay. The milk is, is uh, very good in, in convincing the, the planters not to burn their canes uh, before harvesting. Why? Uh, they impose a trust loss factor okay, of uh, pre-harvest burn. So, I took this picture. If there's only beautiful trash or what, good quality things, of course there will be no that. But if they will burn, and it, it will be a little dry than 10%, burn dry it early to 30%. So, uh, that's why uh, not too many planters now burn their canes facilitate harvesting because of this. Of course, there are still burnt uh, canes, 
uh, for other reasons like accidental fire what? <coughs> but post harvest burning is still the dominant practice our minimum estimate 65% of all farms in the Philippines are burned to facilitate the next operation uh, the Agriculture Secretary of South Rock, Paulo Brazil State, had announced a new model successful partnership arrangement between the private sector and with this unique kind of government. About 85% of sugarcane products in Sao Paulo have committed to meet uh, the agro environmental goals of the uh, protocol. Uh, what's their commitment? Based on sugarcane past harvest field burning. 2014 for mechanized areas, 2017 or next year for non mechanized areas. For this effort, they will be getting 8.5 tons of CO2 emission reduction for the next 10 year period. The Green Port Protocol included electricity co generation. We have about three sugar mills already wired to this. Uh, they are also into uh, ethanol plants. And they're trying to recover their part, their parian forests. The sum effects of this initiative is about 62.5 tons carbon uh, dioxide reduction in the state of Sao Paulo by 2017. Sao Paulo is like Nebros of the Philippines on a bigger scale. <laughs> uh, the cane the planted to Sao Paulo is, I think, 9 million hectares. Uh, so, ganito po kadami yung trash na sinusuno sa visitors sa first market. So, bakit nila susunugin niya? Kasi na, ah, paano ito ipokultivate? At hindi mas susunugin niya. Yeah. Uh, in Brazil, practically, oh, 100% of their gains are uh, mechanically harvested, combined harvested. Okay. Uh, and that's why for more than 10 years they're not burning their trash anymore. As I mentioned a while ago, if the trash are shredded, there, there will be no more difficulty for the stubbles germinate for the sugar. So there's the two. As compared to this one, no? But of course, uh, uh, as in the case of the initiatives of, uh, of our partners in, in, in Nepos, okay, they're using trash credit. Okay, ano naman ang issue ng trash credit? There are the negative or the great comment on this. It's a new investment on their part, okay? And the, the, the knives of the trash credit easily get done. So we need to have very sharp knives, okay? So we have to improve our metallurgy. Of course, we don't have a, a good metallurgy, so we're importing the trash feathers. Okay. Uh, a simple machine, hindi natin kaya ng wind. <laughs> so uh, that's the effect. Uh, so what we need in the industry is an agro environment protocol, a partnership agreement between the government. Uh, I have friends here from the SRP and the uh, Security Funders Association. Uh, as usual, the Philippines did to find Mahira. There are so many planters associations. In Brazil, they have only Unica, which is about 90% of all the planters. So if the Unica leadership make the decision, then that's it. And the Philippines will So the agro environment protocols spell out no main burning, soil conservation, soil erosion control on the side slope of rivers like by planting fruit trees, wood trees, bamboos, tall grasses, adaptation of reduced village and control planting of sugar cane sloping areas. Implement simultaneous protection, protection preservation of the three pieces of agro ecosystem by planting trees for every 100 rows for lesser, around 39 property boundaries 
where there are really stones and some more tennis for paint growing. The trees will serve as wind and fire break and to have unique functions of trees in the hydrologic cycle. <clears throat> the agro-environment protocol must complement the adoption of good agronomic practices. Adequate that and so on and so forth. What's the impact? The impact would be avoided emission of 0.92 to 1.92 million tons carbon dioxide to social cost. 90.33 to 36.2 million US dollar. So even if we only use half of this money, the social cost value, and we spend on energy, it's in fact the future of the Philippine sugar industry will be used. Conclusions. The IRD funds to be invested in building green cultivars, exhibiting longer recruiting and promoting through extension services of low burning gains, as farming is more than just justified with the aggregate benefits on the reduced fertilizer application, hence energy bill and carbon dioxide emission through the many roads of avoided pollution. The high energy bill of all gains is increasing due to the practice of buying gains by big sugar mills from as far as 120 kilometers. Where about 30% of gains in negros? This practice translates to about 60% or more of the gains for the entire sugar industry. This whole practice uh, consumes more energy, more than 4 tons of LDO per tanky, uh, as compared to 2.59 LDO per tanky. In turn, increases also the carbon footprint of food. The high energy and carbon footprint of fertilizer, particularly in nitrogen, can be offset through grass farming. All the emissions of carbon dioxide are compensated by transforming sugar cane production into carbon sequestering through the use in the soil organic matter plus the avoided emissions of fertilizer safe but not burned and the focal nitrogenization when sugarcane crash is decomposed. In the past millennium, the discovery of oil is the game changer. It is oil also that should prevent changes as using it oil will liberate 40 times more carbon dioxide when the estimated maximum allowable emission is only <coughs> One per So the two degrees limit in global warming will not be exceeded. Promoting the adoption of green agroecological protocol, a partnership of between the sugarcane planters and the government is a policy imperative to reduce the energy bill and make sugarcane production carbon negative rather than carbon positive. The commitment of the Philippine President during the COP21 Green Climate Change Conference held in Paris in December 2015 of 70% reduction in CO2 emission could be more than uh, achieved. The adoption of uh, agroecological protocol for CO2 production is not still a farewell to fossil fuel oil, but it could make sugarcane production climate change compliant. As more than 3 tons of uh, carbon dioxide per hectare, or about 1 million tons of this calculated emission, if 80% of, of the planters adopt or implement the, the protocol. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk to you. Thank you, sir, for the insightful lecture. Uh, our, uh, the open forum and the discussion is now open with your actors from the Academia Concerned Agency, Dr. Bonita El Movillon uh, from the Department of Chemical Engineering of the College of Engineering and Agro-Industrial Technology. We, may, uh, we also call Mr. Vincent Acuna of uh, Arsenio Al Acuna Agricultural Corporation and Mr. Patito S. Sandoval of Sugar Regulatory Administration. With the first enactment of Clean Air Act, 
we were we taught by the NR not to run. And I replied then, but we will all end up in jail. <laughs> I told them that sugar cane was 364 days a year, and it will take us only one day to run it. So, yeah, it will, it, it will only take a muscle stick between a handful of people. Ang sakada namin, cut and load, two tons per day, they burn. If they cut green, one ton. Mm -hmm. So, kung 250 yung one ton, magiging 500 yung kanila daily weight. Ito yung mga reality. At the peak ng El Nino ng March and April, ang sabi ng planter, better burn and build than left in the field ang kaputin ka ng ilan at pagsaray ng sugar meal. So, kung I aiming for 150 tons per hectare yield at 2 kilograms nitrogen, I'm always using 300 kilograms nitrogen per hectare. So, kung hindi mo ako pagamitin ng nitrogen, I better think of other business. I better shift to other products. So, it's a little bit of a reality business. But, <coughs> successful yung green cane. For this year, yung mag na economy, yung farm market. sa construction, lumipat sa livestock. As in, the whole country experience uh, labor shortage. So, napakamura ng isang palito ng post-corona na clear mo lahat ng buong mundo. It will cost you one million to acquire this letter. For that increment. Ilan lang siguro yung pwede mo siya. Sa 50,000 sugar cane farmers ng Pilipinas, siguro ang isang daan lang yung kapapul ko nila. Siya na. Para may establish mo yung mababang uh, LDO ay kailangan mataas ang yield mo. Wala kami yung variety na nakakatap ng rato. Maximum ng two rato. Para ma-attain mo ang average na 100 TC per hectare, one plant crop at one rato. Malaki ang yan yung sa, sa plant crop. Kung a year mo is 60 tons, hindi tatapasin ang tapasero mo yan ng dito. Since hindi halaw yan. Accidental burning, pero sila yung nagsimuli na. Tapos sabihin nila, accident yan na sunog. Pero may pumunta doon ang alas 12 ng gabi na siya nagsimuli. It's it, two na yan. So, gusto natin, how I wish. Nag-slender ako, three consecutive years, yung residual organic matter na 1%, naging 3.5% organic matter. Pero, ako lang ang mislender sa buong bayan namin. Baka sa buong Batangas, tatlo lang kami na meron, ah, na 30,000 hectares. So, how we wish na lahat sila meron. Hindi pwede ka mag-slender na wala ng traktora. Mataas na horsepower ng traktora ang magpo-propel ng slender. So, so, the ideal situation is very far from the realities ng magkara. So, so, kung paano is, is implement yung law, nandun, pagdating sa ground, hard selling tayo. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Um, I am Bill Sapunga. Uh, I was a professor. Uh, I was a student of Sir Ted um, three years ago. I took a degree program here in Sulus Panos. 
because they had the intention of working in the family business in uh, sugarcane farm. Um, at that time, we didn't know much about sugarcane or agriculture. But, uh, um, after studying here in Las Banas for a year, um, I became very interested in um, what a lot of my family have been saying uh, I found my calling because <laughs> uh, among all the apos, I'm the only one who became interested in helping out the family business. So um, I want to start by saying when I joined in the business, we had a lot of old practices that um, people have been doing since they started farming. Uh, we had our farms, I think, since 1980s. And then one of the most common practice was really to burn the field for land preparation. And um, when I was in the class of Serta, uh, he really emphasized the negative effects of burning and the benefits of trash farming. So it was really one of the things that I tried to change slowly. <clears throat> um, in the first year, we did. Um, we were, I was I was supposed to look out um, for five farms, and then what we did was for that first year we did two fields per farm, one or two and one new plant that we practiced. Um, trash farming. Uh, trash farming where we did um, was the trashing and removal of leaf sheets at uh, six to seven months and then no burning of games for land preparation. Um, in the beginning it was hard because the farmers were not used to it. A lot of them would even my parents. They would say that it would take time and things like that. But um, the effects of detaching, removal of leaf sheets, um, proved, proved to be very effective and beneficial. Uh, and what Sir said that in this PowerPoint, um, it, it does fix the soil. Um, we had one field that had very poor soil. We would always reach uh, maybe an average of 50 tons. Um, and then we tried fixing it by putting mud press and mill ash. Um, but then we would still get a uh, low yield. So what we did was we did, we did trash farming and the trashing. Um, we left the trash in the field and from the detrashing and then when we, for land preparation, instead of burning, we let the leaves dry out and then we, apply, uh, we put in our tractor the disc harrow and then we just apply several passes. In a couple of days, it would be shredded and then we do land preparation where it is turned around to the soil and then it became ready for planting. After two crops, the soil that was uh, zero organic matter and then had orange and gray color um, started becoming brown and turning to a darker shade. It also gave us better yield in new plant and even with raccoon. Uh, if we did not burn, um, even uh, farmers passing by our farms, um, they would even comment that our ratun fields look like new plant crops. Um, and this, I believe, is because uh, there's no more delay. Um, after you burn the field, normally when you harvest and then you burn the field, uh, there are some 
Star Wars that will let the show growth. And if you burn it, you lose the first growth of those games. And it will take one to two weeks for them to begin sprouting again. <coughs> so, for me, that two week delay um, is very important. And it also, and for us, for example, it grows out and then you burn it and you have to cut again. Instead of looking at that as a first tool, you consider it already as a second tool because you had to, um, the game had to grow again. Um, another effect, uh, another beneficial effect from the detraction and the removal of leaf sheets is its a uh, beneficial effect for the harvesting period. A lot of our tapuseros uh, and our contractors who bring in people to harvest, they all commented that um, the games are easier to harvest because there's no more, uh, there's less trash in the fields. And then it's easier for them to cut close to the ground. So if it's, uh, if you were to in the field, you will also, uh, you don't have to go for stubble shaving anymore. Um, there's also less lodging if there is a, if there are strong winds because there are less leaves on the canes. Um, they also say, and we see that um, there's better cane quality. Uh, we see that the stalks uh, look better and they feel harder. Uh, there's also bet better water retention because of the trash uh, covers the field. So throughout the growing period, if you the trash at six months and then you, you put it on the floor, um, if it rains, the moisture is kept even if there's no rain for uh, a few weeks. Um, since the leaves are covering the soil, there's also less weeds, especially if you do it for a tool. And then, well, if we're, at, if we're a new plant and then we, we ratoon the field, um, for us to do the trash farming protocol, what we do is we trash pile the leaves after harvest instead of burning. We do it in alternate rows. And then after three months, by the time, by the, time the games have um, canopy, the trash is almost fully decomposed. So uh, we do the trash and then a row that has no trash and then trash. And then the, the row with no trash, that's where we can cultivate and that's where we apply fertilizer. Um, and then for the return, by the time it's six months when we the trash again, we put the trash on the part that the, uh, the on the row that was that we did not put the trash. So at six months, the whole field is fully covered with trash. Um, also, the effect of the trashing the caves. Um, by the time you land prep, when you have to chop the trash in the field, there will be less leaves to trash because you already removed some of it uh, when it was around six or seven months old. It would be even better if we can the trash two times, uh, but then sometimes it's hard because uh, because of uh, labor, there's a lot of stuff to be done there. Um, Normally for Ratun, we would apply more urea because we anticipate the decline in yield. But after um, the trashing and trash farming, we, we don't have to apply so much. We apply less. Um, before, well, for me, a lot of people believe that burning for that purpose really, you know, a must. 
Well, sometimes we really have to burn. Uh, up to now, we also we still burn. But then, as much as possible, I tell our people uh, try not to burn <coughs> because of its effects in the field. And they've seen it also after the three years, three to four years that I've been working in the farm. Uh, at first, it was just one of our farms that started the trashing. In the second year, two. Now all of them are practicing and they're all trying to do the fashion. And what's nice is to see our neighboring farms, they're also trying to follow. Um, especially with the trashing, because they see our canes on the road. They see that we remove the leaves. So at first they were wondering why we did that. <laughs> they were all, I mean, it was very new to a lot of farmers. Um, then we began to see that in our neighboring farms they were also practicing the thrashing. So we, you know, we would like to believe that that came from our practice, that they would see it. <coughs> and as Sir said, mastering the Redwood cycle is a key point in sugarcane farming because that is very important. Um, that's where we save the land preparation, uh, we save the time. Uh, if we have a good ratun, that's where a lot of farmers make money, especially the small planters. Um, I believe that the trashing, trash farming, is very important in keeping a good ratun. So, hopefully, we can get the word out, and then it will be a matter of time that people will be practicing it. Uh, we have to say, Dr. Mendoza, advocacy on uh, no burning policy and the trash farming. Since the 70s, there are several, research, several researches were done on uh, the advantages of uh, processing clean cakes. So whenever we discuss this in class, we always emphasize to our students to process fresh, that is unburned, mature, and clean cakes. And then uh, several uh, authors of uh, textbooks already uh, done, have done some calculations that for every one unit of non-sugar, which some will come from the uh, trash in the juice, you know, for every one unit of non-sugar, about 0.4 unit of the sugar of the juice will be unrecoverable. So that will be a good incentive for the planters to really uh, give the factories clean cakes. And of course, the maturity of cakes uh, have been emphasized already by our speaker. Now, with respect to the nitrogen fertilizer, I know that there are several kinds of greenhouse gases. Among these greenhouse gases is nitrous oxide. So, uh, literatures will tell us that nitrous oxide will have both natural and human related sources. Um, unfortunately, the, the natural sources would be about 68%. The human-related sources would only be about 32%. And when we talk about human-related activities, that would include agriculture, burning of fossil fuels, and then the industries. And as far as agriculture is concerned, agriculture contributes about 67% of the nitrous oxide emissions. So if uh, we have a commitment no, to COP21 to reduce our emissions by 70%, so maybe that emissions would not be coming from the nitrous oxide, but maybe it may come from other greenhouse gases, reduction of other greenhouse gases. Because when we talk about agriculture, we're referring to production of crops as well as livestock. And livestock would be a great uh, contributor to greenhouse gas, especially in methane production. Now, when we apply uh, synthetic fertilizer, uh, of course, uh, we have some calculations that, that will contribute to greenhouse gas. But uh, if we extend our calculation to nitrous oxide emission coming from organic farming, still we may have some emissions. So we cannot really zero out you need to stop emissions. And uh, in agronomy, we know that nitrogen is an essential uh, uh, element for crop production. So for us in the academy, uh, this will be a, a good
good start. Sabi nga, it's, it's good to start, do something that then do nothing at all. So we may not achieve from the agriculture side in 70% emission as promised. But we hope that in some other human-related activities, there may be some reduction. So that more or less we can achieve the promise that 70% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions.